Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Chingo Chats. Leave your politics at the door. We promised we would record Chingo Chats before recording Red Pill Tamales. It's impossible. We fucked up. <laughs> we fucked up. We fucked up. We're like Biden supporters right now. We fucked up. We totally fucked up. We recorded Yahweh. RPT. We recorded RPT first. Uh, but hey, big, big, big shout out to all the members of the Thea, all you guys who support the show direct by going to patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. We just had some new people sign up. Shout out to uh, Lenore Martinez, Sergio, and everybody else. These are our newest patrons. That's right. Uh, I'm on tour. I'm a stand-up comedian. Legalized Freedom Tour is coming in hot. Uh, we've already knocked off two of the cities. Shout out to Raleigh and McAllen. And we have about 28 to 30 more cities to hit up. Cannot wait to go perform, tell jokes, have a good time. That is honestly probably like some of the best fun I have in my day to day, in my job. I love being on stage telling jokes. Yeah, I was going to say travel. in life. travel. Well, yeah, in life. Yeah, in yeah. life. That's probably yeah. the most fun. Yeah, dude, it's it's super fun, man. Just, you know, working out the jokes and trying new stuff. Uh, we're headed to Naples, Florida, March 16th through the 17th. West Palm Beach, Florida, April 3rd. Tacoma, Washington, April 7th. Nashville, April 14th. Corpus Christi, May 5th through the 7th. Arlington, May 12th through the 15th. New Braunfels, May 20th. Abilene, May 21st. So many more cities. Uh, Lubbock, Texas, Bryan College Station, San Angelo, Odessa, Austin, Albuquerque, El Paso, Irvine, Ontario, Denver, Oklahoma City, Chicago, Phoenix, San Jose, Brea, Oxnard, San Antonio, Addison, and we're working on Houston, Salt Lake, and Las Vegas. Hit up the website, chingobling.com. Get your tickets now. Do not get sold out because VIP is always the first thing to go. Even in this economy, man. Even in this economy. Even in this economy, people are like, you know what? I got to meet this fool. We got to take the photo. I need the handshake. I need the autograph. Uh, YouTube, CBTV. Make sure you subscribe to that channel yeah. as we put up clips and the whole episodes for the public episodes on there. Um, the comments are really, you know, they're good. You know, the ratio, which you guys can't see because they removed. Why do you think they really removed the dislike button? In I, your think, opinion? I think it's because this new puppet regime that's in. They're so unliked. They're illegitimate and they're feckless. And that is why they can't possibly get ratioed everywhere that's why you see nobody wearing biden gear don't nobody rock biden merch that's what i think yeah i saw a, a really techie channel break down the whole thing from a very techie perspective and uh none of it maybe because they also don't keep up with politics at all but maybe maybe somewhat but they really just made a, a huge case of how it hurts the content creators like it's hurting mm. it's hurting youtube's biggest content creators no matter like not even considering politics like this was a huge tech channel they have like two or three huge tech channels under their umbrella, and all they do is talk about computers and firewire and firmware and all this shit, all this nerdy shit, which I watch from time to time. And and they explained how the algorithm's not going to know certain things because you know the the ratios aren't there, and they're going by different metrics like view times and this, that, and the other. And it was really complicated, you know, to understand. But as, after I went back a couple times, none of it like makes sense to do to a content creator on a platform if you wanted them to continue to grow and have your ad revenue or ad, you know generation whatever platform grow I, I don't know it just didn't make any sense so you have to kind of think that it's got to be a little bit more nefarious than that right like someone's pulling the strings being like look we got to silence these people over here so they didn't persuade you that it had nothing to do with uh like did they give they gave good reasons as to like why a big tech company would want to get rid of that they they they, ju they didn't give good reasons but they made some justifications <laughs> of why they might want to but in at the end of the day it's still bad for the platform altogether so oh, it's bad for the platform to have a dislike yeah, button. Yeah, no, no, no. It's bad to, to get rid of to the get dislike. rid of it. Yeah. Oh. So they were they were now they and this was like one of them was Linus Tech, which is a huge channel. They were just now they're thinking of other ways to branch out of YouTube faster because they never thought that it would hurt their business model this drastically by just getting rid of the the like uh, dislike button, like and dislike, you know, ratios. Maybe big tech is being subsidized some way, and they're willing to uh, absorb that hit for four years, and then as soon as Trump comes back in, they'll bring the dislike button back. Yeah, man, it's a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> you might be right. I have no idea. I do know that I'm fat. <laughs> um, as you guys know, we did a weight loss uh, challenge in the Discord. Obviously, I lost. I didn't. I, I didn't shed the pounds like everybody else. Yeah, uh, you did. You didn't lose. You lost I, like seven pounds. Um, I think, but then I'd gain a couple. I'd gain a couple, so it'd be like, it it'd be like um, I might drop four, and then. I can't remember what so it was. So you were a net exporter of body fat yeah. and then you became a net importer. Yeah, basically, you know, I might have dropped a couple pounds when it was all said and done, mm -hmm. but it wasn't the 10 that I wanted to do. Uh, and then 
part two of the challenge is yeah. um, we're going to do it different. It's not so much the scale. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I am a five-star athlete. I am, a, you know, I am into combat sports. So I'm used to fighting the scale before I fight my opponent. My opponent. Appointed? Maybe Glock. My opponent. Appointed opponent. Um, no, I'm just kidding. But um, So we're going to do a body fat percentage yes. now. Which you got your DEXA scan done yesterday. You sent me the image of it. I got to go do mine today or tomorrow, which we were supposed to do it last week, but the, everything's just barely kicking off. People have started to post their initial weigh-in last week. Mm -hmm. This will drop on Monday, so you will have already made your second uh, weigh-in. And you know, if, wait, 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 wait. I got to go get another DEXA next next week. No, no, no. Oh, okay. no, I'm saying you did it. We should have done it last week when when I we posted and said let's kick off last Friday. Oh. Okay. But whatever. People what, I mean, has anybody in the Discord been in? First of all, this wasn't a DEXA, what I went to do. Oh, it's not? No, no. Oh, was, you did the in body. Yeah, that might have been it. It's the one you stand on and you hold the handle. Yeah. People were saying that it was pretty close to a DEXA. I don't know. I didn't, hadn't really looked into it, but okay. um, whatever. Like, whatever gets close to a figure that might make sense. Yeah. Did it, When you got it back, did you think it was off or pretty close to <laughs> what you remember the DEXA that you actually did a while back? I mean, my DEXA was depressing as well <laughs> years ago. Man, honestly, bro, I stood on that thing. First of all, shout out to my trainer, Sean Harris. Uh, he's got, He owns the machine. And he hooked it up, and I stood on the damn thing. And I held the handles, and I was holding them wrong. He's like, no, man, that's your sides. And first of all, I was very dubious as to how this device, how do you just stand on it and hold handles, and it tells you all of that, right? Mm -hmm. So the body fat percentage... It was, you know, it, as it's reading it, it's just, doo -doo 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 -doo. it's just going up. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I was like, what the fuck? Doo -doo 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 -doo. I was like, damn, man, somebody stop this thing. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I was like, I need to hop off. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Bro, I don't even want to say on there how depressing, bro. You got to be in the Discord to know. My body fat percentage is ridiculously high right now. Uh, I need to hurt and get on TRT. Uh, I need some supplements. If you are a supplement manufacturer, if you want to sponsor the show, if you want to sponsor my journey, now's the time. Now is the time. Get in on the ground floor while I'm still fat. <sighs> I wonder if we can get you to like, like do a, you know, they'll, I referenced TRT um, Vitor, Vitor Belfort, mm -hmm. like before TRT and then after USADA came in, he just like deflated, right? There's a lot of those old school UFC fighters. Well, he was probably on roids, not TRT. He was on everything. Okay. Yeah. But TRT something up. More noto most notori notoriously, like later he was known as TRT Fitor because it was a lot of uh, TRT exemptions that the UFC would give fighters. Mm. So that's what you were allowed to use. Okay. The question was how much of it was he using yeah. and how often. So, but you would see these giant traps on him, you know, maybe we can do that for you. So I could still be a five-star athlete and um, I could still be into combat sports. Oh yeah. And, and USADA yeah. could be like, nah, son, Chingo, he just on a little TRT. Next thing you know, you're going to be doing backflips on stage. You can do a lot of, yeah. I need to do something. I'm thinking about going for a jog after this or another walk after this. I went for a walk this morning. And um, I pulled out my Tim Ferriss Four Hour Body book again. I pulled this motherfucker. I pulled this shit back out. I was like, okay, I need to skim through some of this and just brush up. So what did Sean say when you when you told him what your goal was? <laughs> he just looked at me like, okay, well, how many tortillas are you eating? Mm. I saw you was taste testing Delia's tamales. You was in the valley. Yeah. Um, he really didn't say a whole lot because I was still in shock. Um. But I'm going to follow up with him. Like, all right, bro. So so check this out. So you're telling me I have to follow everything you're telling me to do to a T? Because, dude, first of all, in this economy, can I read you the menu? He One of the menus he gave me in the past, which are, like, very impossible to follow. Can I just read y'all this menu? Please. Because it's not practical, especially in this economy. All right. First of all, first of all, this shit's confusing. Okay. Um, Give it to me. Like, for example, um, you know how people say you should get a, a gram of protein per pound of your weight? Or what is it? A, an ounce of protein? What is it? It is. It's a, it's 1 to 1. 1.5 grams of protein. What people tend to say is of body weight. It's of lean body mass. Lean body mass. So if you are if you step on the scale right now and you're 170, they don't mean 170. They mean of your lean body mass. So when you look at that in body or a DEXA scan, yeah. it has your... Your water weight, your bone density, your uh, muscle mass, and your body fat percentage. Okay. Calculating your entire body weight. So you base it off of the muscle? You're supposed to, but a lot of people just do one times however much you weigh. 170, so 170 grams, 200 grams, whatever it is. Okay, now here's why, where it gets crazy. The first meal is 300 grams of egg whites. So how does that work? How is it 300 grams of egg whites, but I'm supposed to be getting, 100, let's just say, 170 grams of protein? Well, how many grams are in 300 grams of egg whites? Did he give you the macros or just? Yes. The... Yes. Hold on. 
um, macros are 262 protein. That's and it just says 262. I don't know what that is. 262 what? Mm-hmm. Grams? I'm going to do, um, we're going to break it down on air for people because a lot of people are confused by macros, but there are a lot of people in the Discord that do follow macro counting and are, are familiar with it. So it was 300 grams of egg whites? Yes. We, and then 40 grams of oats. And then it would change, if I carb cycle, it would change every fifth day where I'd have to add a banana, two slices of Ezekiel bread, and one tablespoon of almond butter. But don't worry about that. It's 300 grams egg whites, 40 grams oats. Uh, 300 grams of egg whites. How many protein is that? Let's see. This doesn't seem accurate. It says fucking 1,000 grams of protein. <laughs> no, hold on. And that's why I'm fat. <laughs> this, is t- this is purposely... This is like politics. They purposely make it confusing so that you stay fat and you don't know how to vote. You're suppressing the vote? Is that what they're doing? Yeah. Meal two is 150 grams of ribeye. First of all, how much is this going to cost me? 200 grams of asparagus, 100 grams of sweet potato. And then meal number three, 150 grams of wild Atlantic salmon with 100 grams of Brussels sprouts. This just sounds disgusting. Fish in Brussels. And then you go to meal number four, 150 grams of 99% lean ground turkey with 150 grams of white rice, 100 grams of spinach, and 50 grams tomato. One tablespoon fat-free balsamic. I'm just going to do this shit on my phone because I have the uh, macro calculator. I think we're boring everybody with these numbers. Nah, man, you're not bored. The point point that I'm trying to say is this. I'm going to need a second refrigerator. Like, how do you... No, okay, so 300 grams is only 163 calories, and it's 32 grams of protein. So, you know, you can go by grams or ounces. Like, what's, you know, 163 calories? That sounds like it's fucking, you know, maybe four ounces of egg whites. Yeah, how about that? How many, how many ounces is 300 grams? It's about, it's like 10 ounces. 10? Yeah, which is a lot. But, yeah, you, you, like you fit up a, fill up a shaker bottle. Usually those are t- 10 to 12 ounces of just liquid egg white. You cook them, you know, it's, it's probably, you know... <laughs> Yeah, which is a lot. Like, down. but but even then, like, you can find other ways to get it. That was thirty grams of protein altogether. You okay. can, yeah, you could just do a protein shake is twenty grams, and then have two eggs. There's your thirty grams of, of literally two eggs. You don't have to have just egg whites. Wait, two eggs is thirty grams of protein. A protein shake plus two eggs oh. would just be that, that would be easier. Th- or you can get a protein. What we do is like protein shake and a scoop of collagen, which is like flavorless extra protein you can throw into anything and that usually has anywhere from 15 to 20 grams and then just mix it in a shake there's 40 grams in just a shake and you know what um when tim ferris talks about a slow carb diet on here one of the tips is within 30 it's 30 within 30 so within 30 minutes of waking up you're supposed to have 30 grams of protein so, mm. so in this case, yeah. it'd be like a shake and fucking chingate algo way. Yeah, I, mean, I, need, I need to find a shake that I that, that I like I like. You know what I'm saying? That that's not gonna be straight milk. Yeah, it's all this like dairy, like whey, and it's like. Ugh. Yeah, pick anything other than whey. Pick the. I mean, we use the animal protein, the Redcon brand. There's the uh, like nature's whatever. That's plant protein, pea protein, brown rice protein, or whatever. Uh, I think people find this interesting because a lot of the people that are listening to this Monday episode mm-hmm. are in the Discord, are in the Patreon. Yeah, and we're and even if you're not a member of the Patreon, you're not in the Discord. We're in month three. All right, we about to be first quarter about to be over with. Spring right? breaks next week. Before you know it, you know what I'm saying. Spring break is next week. Summer around the corner, and you know what I'm saying like we're trying to be live our best life now more than ever. You want to have clarity of thought. You want to be fit. You want to be healthy. Like, in case shit hits the fan, which, you know, we don't know what's going on in the world. Yeah. We don't know if if, if, if in cold weather you got to go siphon some gas out of your neighbor's car. <laughs> they chase you. Are you able to run? It might happen. Um, you know, it's just like hard times make, what is it? Hard times make hard, what, strong men? It's such a, yeah, it's a, it's a long phrase. It's like yeah, that. so in other words, what I'm trying to say is, Now's not the time to be soft and weak and, no. and, and fucking, uh, you know, weak sauce. But also like, and this is what I hate about not being in my best shape ever, because it's hard to give people uh, suggestions about this when they're like, you don't look like you're the leanest you've ever been. Like, you're absolutely right. But I, we have the know-how. A lot of people in the Discord that have lost a lot of weight in the past and gotten in really good shape that have had families and moved on from being fucking Sean, which I love Agent Sean. 
But a regular person is not going to follow that diet plan. It's just impossible. It doesn't make sense. I'm not even done with it, bro. Look, that was breakfast. What's, what's I mean, the rest of it? Ready? Meal number five, 200 grams. Okay, I need my shit in ounces, bro. This gram shit throw me off. Okay. 200 grams of cod, 100 grams of broccoli, 25 grams of almonds, and then every fifth day, you would have, have added 60 grams of oats. Uh, meal six, 100 grams of chicken breast, 100 grams of asparagus, and then on, on day five, you would have added, just like the cycle? Yeah. On day five, you would have added a tablespoon of coconut oil to your 100 grams of chicken breast, 100 grams of asparagus. Ugh. And then there's a shit ton of supplements. At morning, L-carnitine. After meal number one, CLAs, multivitamin, omega-3 fish oil. Post-workout, whey shake. After meal three, more CLAs, more enzymes. After meal six, CLAs, enzymes, ZMAs. It's like Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, all that stuff. Like when I was in college and I would do all that. Yeah, I got in great shape. But you got to think about how much time you're putting into it, right? Like you were focused on just, you were getting focused on getting laid and pumping weights. That's it. And maybe going to class. A whole lot of pumping. That's a whole lot of pumping in and out of your bedroom. Um, But a lot of people aren't going to follow that. There's no way. You have to make it really, really dumb simple. And the grams thing, I mean, once you get used to tracking your macros, it makes sense. Because a lot of things like uh, almonds or something or butters, you might do grams. Cheese, you're going to do grams. Chicken, broccoli, these bigger things, you're going to do ounces. So that'll make sense when you start tracking. But you you can't overwhelm a person who already doesn't, isn't used to tracking. Like you might use uh, my fitness pal. A lot of people talk about that or, or fat secret or whatever. I use carbon. I talk about that because it's a great macro uh, counter for me. I know how to use it. But you don't need all the supplements. Like it's 90%. Your food, is it just clean? Do you know that it doesn't irritate your stomach? Do you know it doesn't blow you? Do you know that it doesn't give you any kind of uh, irritation, like you said? And then 10% is working out. Let's say uh, 8% is working out. And then like the remaining 2% is your supplementation. So taking your L-carnitine or taking your BCAAs or taking your whatever the hell you want to take. Creatine is really the only supplement that is proven to really enhance performance. Yeah, I have that. Yeah, other than that, like... Just meet your protein, and and honestly, if you go by your, your, your macros of like uh, protein, carbs, fats, and then your overall calories, they'll most experts will say stay within your calorie range, hit the protein, and let the fats and carbs kind of fall where they may, as long as you're hitting the other two. Start with that. Start with that, and you're gonna make huge improvements. First of all, I'm gonna have to go hunting or something, <laughs> or fishing and hunting. I need like another freezer with a hog in it. Motherfucking sausage, deer sausage, a uh, 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 feral wild hog sausage, because geez, bro, how much? Come on now, I, where am I gonna put all this? Like my ki- my kids, our little fridge in the back. There's some tamal. I mean the freezer in the back. Mm-hmm. There's some tamales in there, and like some kids snack kolaches and little Jimmy Dean breakfast sausage. There's like a couple pizzas and nuggets and Paw Patrol nuggets. You know what I mean? There's kids shit. You know, what's in the fridge in the front? Yogurts, Danimals, you know, right, deli yeah. meat, cheese, like, you know, tortillas, like Luisa, all the shit she been cooking. Penguinas and shit. You know, chocolate milk. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, it's just, like, yeah, like you have those. It's like, where is the, there's a little bit of chocolate milk in that. In it's, the really, it's really good. Where is, where is there going to be room? This is, must be for a single person. Like I'm going to have a tray of, I guess we used to do this. Marisol and I used to be able to have like, a meal prep tray just full of sweet potato, another tray just full of rice, another one just full of chicken, full of steak, full of this. And you're just like, grab your Brussels sprouts, grab this, boom, 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 boom. And you got your little tray, your meal prep things. And it's a little overwhelming, but, um, you know, you gave some good suggestions, which is like, okay, well, do you like any fucking shakes? Because the shakes, you know, the powders, they, that doesn't go in the fridge. Yeah. That don't go in your freezer. So... Um, my soul super like anti-powder she says they all taste like garbage which fine do you have do you mind protein shakes it depends i i make sure that they don't like add too much stuff um here's another suggestion mm-hmm. just remember i started buying this again because i used to buy it in college all the time and don had never had it and she was an actual bodybuilding competitor uh muscle leg do you know what muscle leg is that's the little that's the uh liquid egg whites right yeah um Yes, that one, uh, the one that comes in the uh-huh. is another brand, but Muscle Leg itself is a different brand, but it's just basically pasteurized egg whites, uh-huh. but they're flavored. You can buy flavored ones. And you just drink them, right? You just drink them. You can actually cook them if you wanted to. So here's, here again, again, here's my thing. I need to find a place for a second fridge because a big gallon of Muscle Eggs, that's not going to fit. That's not going to fit in our fridge. I Because mean, like I said, you got like chocolate milks, 
oat milk juices would you put um, it back you want to put it back here since you got rid of that little one or is the reason it, of getting rid of it was for space um because it would be loud i got rid of it for a few reasons it was unplugged it was just sitting there and i think the dude paid me with a fake hundred (laughs) dollar bill which i'm gonna have to figure that shit out and i was all nice like no 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 dude don't tip it up no 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 i'll help you uh make sure it sits upright and then afterwards it's like that motherfucker had paper plates didn't he and it's like why did his girl hop out right when he was gonna pay and it's like and my wife is she's like yeah she's trying to distract us do you who has the bill we have it up front. And then, and last night, I was like, with my eyes closed, feeling different bills, like random bills that I had in my wallet. I ain't had no hundred. So I'm like, okay, I can't hold it next to another hundred to make sure, is it the same tone of green? Is it the same texture? And and here's what first threw me off, right? It's just something was in my subconscious. And I'm like, man, I'm like pushing the baby around the stroller. I'm like, man, let me look at this hundred dollar bill real quick. And I looked at it, you know, that little strip, that little like, um, yeah, on the inside. What do you call that? It's hologram. like an indicator. Yeah. So it's supposed to be on the inside. <clears throat> uh, the new ones are on the outside. Okay. Well, here's what threw me off. That motherfucker just looked like it was like super shiny. No, it just looked like it was glued on. Yeah. They're supposed to be shiny. Yeah. But like the little edge looked like, como que se está despegando. Uh-huh. and I was like, bro, are these counterfeit bills made in China and people out here doing fraud? <clears throat> and I held it up to the light and I'm like, wait. I was like, nah, pobrecito. Like, I'm, I'm hating on this dude. I'm judging him. He was a person of color. Okay, I know y'all. I know y'all are wondering. I know y'all are wondering. Like, nobody was wondering. Somebody was wondering. Like, dog, what race was this cat? You know, this cat. You know, would, would he have an accent? Was he from Louisiana? You know what I'm saying? Like, what, where's this motherfucker from? Is, is this a white boy? Is this Asian? Is this a female? Is, this, is he an old person? Is he a young person? People judge. I was not. So I'm like, I went to Seoul, right? She's bathing the three year old. I was like, hey, am I tripping or is Benjamin Franklin cross-eyed on this motherfucker? And I handed it to her. She said, let me see. She touched it and her hands were kind of wet. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I was like, damn, even the texture of this bill is the feeling. came off. Well, it didn't run, <laughs> but it just felt weird. I was like, when money gets a little wet, I don't think it'd be doing this. So then I start rubbing my hands against like a five, ones, tens, twenties, fifties. Feel, trying to feel that grit that you would feel. Yeah, on the bill. I'm just trying to like, and then with my eyes closed, I'm like, fuh, fuh, fuh. I was like, whoa, 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 this one feels different. And I look at it, okay, oh, there's one of my one dollar bills. No, no, okay, pull it out of circulation. And I'm like, all right, keep feeling, keep feeling, whoa, 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 because I'm trying to see if I can be like, find the culprit. Like, it does it does it weigh less? Is it is it heavier? You know what I'm saying? Because it's like cotton paper. I feel like next week we're going to come back and say patreon.com forward slash red, red pill tamales. tamales. I was duped. I know. And you know what? Here's the worst part about it. Right after the transaction was done, I gave him a five star review. I said, very friendly, on time, courteous. This is on offer up. Mm-hmm. Gave him the five star. Sas, este vato way. Con madre way. Five star. Este, este vato way. He's invited to the barbecue, homie. And Sas. And then afterwards, I'm like, fuck, let me take back this five star. I start looking at his account like, is this like bootleg? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, do you just go around scamming people? And then I thought to myself, well, if you're going to scam people with a fake hundred, normally what they do is they go spend fake hundreds at the flea so they can get like a bunch of real <clears throat> 20s back. Mm-hmm. Or like what George Floyd was trying to do at the at the, at the the corner store. Right. In, uh, you know what I'm saying? Out there in Minneapolis. So I'm like, why would you buy a beverage, uh, a little uh, mini fridge? It's like, so you get it for free or, or it's like is that your scam you buy a bunch of shit off offer up with with counterfeit bills and then you accumulate stuff and then you turn around sell that for real money i don't know i cannot wait to see if this is a real bill or not yeah i don't know this we're is, gonna go to the atm after this podcast yeah. and see if the atm accepts yeah. it this was a person of color uh just like i am i am also a person <laughs> of color i am so. also a person of color and i've got a person of color story for you from last night myself let me tell come on let, let me hear it. we go to walmart uh we get, like get shorts and stuff for the kids for spring break camp or whatever i went to the restroom as soon as we walked in don goes straight to where the, cl- the kids clothes i went to the restroom walk out of the restroom they have like a security guard rent a cop kind of guy there the one usually it's an, an employee that asks for the receipts you know on your way out this time they had like a rent a cop and it's right they also i don't know about the walmart's around here but they have like automated gates now you know, we're like, you can only walk into the store after passing these automatic gates and open mm. up like that. And you can't come out. You have to go around through like a register in, o- in order to leave the store. Okay. So I w- walk out of the restroom and uh, it's just me and this guy. There's no one else. It's kind of later in the afternoon. And he's like, he just looks at me. He's like, 
Yeah, yeah. He goes, uh, hola. And I was like, what's up, man? He goes, he had an accent too. He's like, do you speak um, Spanish? And I was like, yeah, I do. Immediately, I was like, why is he asking me, brown guy, if I speak Spanish? And he had a really thick, like, Jamaican, some kind of accent. And he goes, he goes, how do you say um, shoe? I said, zapato. He goes, how do you say carrot? I was like, this one's kind of hard. Sanoria. Sanoria. Like, yeah. And then, and then he starts asking, he says, how do you say this phrase and that phrase? And then he starts say, saying the phrases back to me. And then he starts telling me other phrases. And I was like, oh, you're pretty good. He goes, ah, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. And I was like, yeah, they won't fool me now. I was like, who, who won't fool you? People who won't show me receipt. And I was like, oh, okay. He goes, they think I don't speak Spanish, but I speak Spanish and I ask for a receipt. And I was like, oh, okay. He goes, yeah. So insinuating that the, the raza just be speaking Spanish to him and then keep walking because he doesn't know Spanish. He goes, but I'm, I'm going to get him now. Recibo. Recibo. Yeah. He was like, I said recibo. And how do you say, show me receipt? Enseñame los papeles. You're like, enseñame los papeles. Yeah, that's what I should have said. As soon as I walked away, they I should have told him a fake fucking phrase, but I gave him the real phrase. Dude, it was hilarious. And I told Don, she's like... So he was asking you if to, teach him Spanish. to teach him Spanish so he could stop the other Mexicans who only speak Spanish to him. I was like, yeah, pretty much. People of color stories. <laughs> exclusive this here. Segment. Yeah. This uh this segment, People of Color Stories, is brought to you by Four Hour Body. By Dan your Dan company. Dan Dan. Your company. Hit us up. Red Pill at Gmail if you want a sponsorship opportunities. If you want to partner up. With Bling Studios or whatever the fuck we're gonna call it. What this. are we gonna call it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But uh I'm I'm just thinking about how I'm gonna lose this body fat percentage, bro. Like I'm on a mission. I'm 42. This is ridiculous. It's been long, it's been just way overdue. Uh hold myself accountable. Shout out to everybody on the Discord. Uh I'm looking forward to this next challenge. Yeah, um, you sound pretty right. I mean, up. it's one thing, yeah, bro. Like you're you're when you look at the thing and it's like Bro, first of all, BMI, that shit wasn't all the way great. And then you look at uh, lean body mass or whatever that, basically your muscle, that shit's low. And I'm like, okay, well, I need to up that. And then the fat part is high. So when you're doing a weight loss challenge and you're going based off the scale, that's one thing. That could be traumatizing. It's like, oh my God, I need to bring down that number. But when you're looking at like body fat percentage and then you look at the number and you're like, bro, you're telling me. You're telling me that portion of my body is fat. And it's just like, what the fuck? I've been living a lie. Well, it's not like you're, uh, you know, one meal away from needing a motorized scooter to get around. Yeah, not like that. So that's a good, that's a plus. Yeah. You're 42 and you're with it. Yeah, and then I see, like, the gentleman, you you played a clip on RPT, and I'm like, damn, that motherfucker, what's his body fat percentage? It's like, if mine is what it is, <clears throat> his shit must be, psh. I mean, it's like, damn, this motherfucker 100% fat. Do you know what your uh, body fat's supposed to be? Um, uh, yeah, Sean told me he's like, he's like, you're gonna want to. Uh, I think he said, ideally, try to get down to 14 or something like that. I was like, motherfucker, let me get to 20 first, goddamn. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was just curious. I, I don't. I don't know what ours are supposed to be based off of our sizes, but uh, let's kind of find a quick chart real quick. Uh, 40 to 49. Uh, excellent would be 14 to 19.8. That's a pretty big range. So 20, 14 yeah. to 19. Good would be 19.9 to 24. So even if you got to 24% body fat, that's still pretty good for being 42. Um, fair is 29, 23.9 to 27. Poor is over 27. And uh, dangerously high is over 31. So you're actually and in the fair to good. Motherfucker, my shit said 28, big dog. Hey, dog, I didn't say shit. I mean, the, you giving people enough context clues where you're like, you need to get down. What'd you say? You need to I get said, fair to good. Rewind the tape. He's like, you need to get down to at least. Uh, oh, look, even if you get down to 24, because look, what did it, <laughs> read that again. It's for, for my age. Excellent is 14 to 19. Good is uh, basically 20 to 24. Fair is 24 to 27 and a half. Poor is 27 and a half. To 32. Motherfucker, I'm poor. <laughs> Read that again. What's poor? 27? 27.7 to 31.9. Poor. And then after that, it's like alarming. Over 32 is dangerously high. Yeah, son. We ain't gonna let it get like that. So, um... Oh, yeah. that was for women. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> See, what is it for men? That means that means I'm dead. Here, read the man one. Oh, shit. I don't know. I missed that. Okay, read read the man one. Excellent would be 8 to 17.4. Okay. 
Good would be 17 and a half to 21. Fair would be 20 to 24. Poor would be 24 to 26. And then dangerously high is over 26. <laughs> dangerously high, bro. <laughs> I didn't even do that on purpose. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, I just, I'm just going to have to um, reformat my entire life. <laughs> and I think TRT definitely is going to ha- I'm going to listen. Well, first you got to get tested to see if you even got low T. I have gotten tested in the past. Okay, but that's not right now. Come yeah, that's on. not right that now. Changes. It changes. Like, it could, it could change by just, you know, adding extra fats into your diet. That helps. Oh, oh, Like, yeah. egg yolks and stuff like that. And, and certain fats helps increase testosterone. Okay. Well, um, well, anyway, the point I was trying to make is I'm going to finish listening to Andrew Huberman's mm-hmm. video because I, I literally hopped on YouTube, like, right after that. I was like, how to lower body fat percentage. And Andrew Huberman's <clears throat> videos, it's like over an hour long. It's all science-y. I only heard the first 10 minutes so far. In the first 10 minutes, did he say strength train? Um, no, I don't think so. Hmm. No, he hadn't got that deep. He okay. was just laying out the fucking lexicon of like, well, you got hormones and this and all this and this. Um, but yeah, we do strength train. It's just like, okay, maybe you need to incorporate some other things on your off days. And I asked Sean, I was like, hey, man, so, all right. So in terms of cardio, what kind? What I got to do? And he was like, he's like, yeah, you probably might just want to do some fasted, steady state. And, you know, he's like, we already do enough kind of intense hit like things on our end to where you may not want to necessarily beat yourself up like, you know, doing extra shit. However, will I try to incorporate a day where I'm doing some sprints? Yes, absolutely. Um, What the fuck are we talking about? You said, uh, oh, weight training. So will I want to maybe on my off days, and he didn't he didn't advise this, but maybe like some powerlifting type shit where it's like, all right, bro, how heavy is your one rep deadlift? How heavy is your one rep squat? How heavy is your one lift, um, one rep bench press? And things like that, just sure. to like try to crank it up. Yeah, because you guys do a lot of uh, like uh, hit, like a lot of high intensity, quick, you know, Jump in, move in, lateral, dumbbell in the hand, you know, box jumps, that kind of stuff. Sometimes. But nine times out of ten, <clears throat> it, it's not that. It's not? No. A lot of times it's it's like um like yesterday he had us do a move where like you have a dumbbell in one arm and you're kind of leaning back with the TRX. So you pull yourself up with the TRX and you're pressing. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, stuff like that. You know, dumbbells, bench. You know, okay. Uh, pull ups, you know, shit like that. I got gotcha. you. Um, any chance? I, I'm, I'm just a weakling, brother. No, you're not. I'm it's, kind of a weakling. Well, you're, I mean, you're pro. I mean, and the reason I said that is because a lot of the stuff we see online is, and, it, and it's not just because it's sped up, but because you do see a lot of that stuff where it's, it's a lot of movements going on. Like, let's just say in an hour, you probably get maybe like after the warm up and after maybe the cool down, maybe a solid 40 to 45 minutes of, of working out. There is a lot of high intensity, like the heart rate's always high, you're always moving. There's no rest periods in between. There's no like, let's regroup and train the central nervous system to push some heavy weight. That's not ever really, from what we see online, the goal. You're not having a a 30 second, minute, two minute break in between sets because you're about to go push or pull some really serious weight. That's not usually what we see. Yeah. So then, yeah, then you're right then. It is, it is more hit oriented than, um, in the past, maybe I was a little bit more my mother when I worked out with him in the past because... And I hope I'm not boring, y'all. Everybody listening, they probably motherfucker. We don't. They care. are deep into. We don't the care Patreon about your fucking regimen. Yeah, oh, do. okay. We're in the Patreon. Yeah, right, they bet, deep bet. into it. Bet. Um, in the past, he had he had me doing. It seemed like every single time we saw him, it's like you're fucking squatting. Right. You know what I mean? You're fucking doing deadlifts. You're fucking doing bench. Um, here's just like some old, old videos. Good mornings. Yeah. Um, a lot of <clears> squats. <throat> What the fuck is this we're doing here? Deadlifts. Okay, there's some box jumps right there. Um, How old is this? What year is this from? Uh, January 8th, 2021. Okay, last year. Yeah. Um, Anyway. Yeah, I'm just going to have to like... Do you know who Jordan Syad is? Charlie. Charlie, okay. So Jordan Syad, I'm going to pull up a video. His his Instagram is one of my favorite Instagrams. Um, 
Jordan, if I'm not mistaken, did a 30 day uh, McDonald's only challenge to show how you could still lose body fat and only eat McDonald's. He was so uh, uh, Louis Simmons, uh, creator and, and owner of uh, Westside Barbell, one of the most famous powerlifting gyms in the entire country. Uh, he came out of there and Louis trained him. And I believe uh, Jordan was his smallest, strongest competitor in history. He, he weighed in at like 150 pounds, 140 pounds, and was deadlifting like four or five times his weight. Crazy strength, developed crazy strength. And he's he's a very no-nonsense kind of approach to, he has a very no-nonsense approach to all of this stuff because I love Sean, like I said, he's great, but the layman's not going to do that. One, you're going to show them that diet plan and whatever your, that suggested regimen is for working out. They're going to be like, okay, cool. I'm going to keep getting fat over here because I'm not doing that. I'm just not. So I'm going to play. I haven't seen this video, but I just wanted to pull up his account <clears throat> and see what Jordan has to say as far as like stuff. It's a second video. It's one of his most recent. So let's just see what he says. Burning pills. You don't need Garcinia Cambogia. You don't need raspberry ketones. You don't need a waist trainer. You don't need apple cider vinegar. What you fucking need is patience. Because most people, and bear with me, because a lot of people are gonna be like, ah, oh, fucker, patience, I know. Nah, nah, nah. Most people will go into a calorie deficit for a grand total of about four hours and then be fucking pissed that they're not losing fat. Well, how do I know <laughs> if I'm in a calorie deficit? I've been in this for about 72 minutes. What the fuck is going on? It's like, you need patience. And I know there's gonna be people, be people in the comment section who are gonna be like, oh my God, I've been in this for three months straight and I've been perfect. I've been in a calorie deficit. I'm not losing fat. What do I do? You're an asshole. If you are in a calorie deficit, legitimately, and you're not losing fat, you're not in a calorie deficit. Okay. Nobody wants to hear that. Okay, so here's <clears throat> the thing though. <clears throat> in the case of wanting to gain muscle and, and lower your body fat percentage, does this rule still kind of apply? Like, in other words, in other words, you saw my my DEXA, whatever, what is it called? In-body, in -body scan, mm -hmm. where it showed you BMI and all that. So, in my case, is it is it like I need to be in a calorie deficit? Like, Chingo, you need to be eating less if you're trying to lower your body fat percentage versus, no, you need to do intense lifts, what's your protein intake, uh, like, you know, lift heavier, gain muscle, those are all still in the same, those are all still within the same wheelhouse, right? It's not that you can't, but most experts, again, I always go back to the people that are at the highest levels of either competing on a lot of drugs, highest levels of training, highest levels of having written and trained people on these subjects will tell you, you can't build a shit ton of muscle and lose a shit ton of fat at the same time. Pick one or the other. Because if you're going to bulk up and you're going to eat extra calories and be in a surplus and you're going to be taking creatine, which is going to uh, make you, you know, retain a lot of water intramuscularly into your muscles, you're not going to be light on the scale. You know, you're just not. And that's going to kind of fuck with your mind. And then you're going to start putting on more body fat that way. If you go the other way, you want to be in a deficit. It's, it's the same thing as just wanting to lose a couple of pounds, but you're going to gradually lose body fat as well. If you continue the protein high, the weights high, because you're not going to be losing muscle in that way. You, so in other words, what you just said is you're, as you're in a calorie deficit and as you're losing pounds and fat, you can preserve Yes, exactly. Okay, got it. And that's you, what you, you want to do. Preserve and not not a sacrifice and uh, cannibalize all your gains. Exactly. That's the best way to put it. You know what I'm saying? Because if you run a shit ton and you're in a deficit and you're not doing any strength training and you're and you're not eating protein and your protein super low, you're skinny fat. Exactly. You're gonna be like the joggers is the perfect example. You see the like the sprinter versus the jogger. You know the people that are super skeletal, kind of skinny, and then the sprinter that's like really muscular. Like you can tell that that's the difference in a regimen like that. Um, let's see. Here's another one. Let's just see what he says here. Oh, shit. I turned it down. I just started following the same nutrient. Nice. Oh, rewind. Just because a calorie is created equal does not mean this has the same nutrient composition as a grilled chicken salad with avocado and tomatoes. Of course not. The grilled chicken salad with avocado and tomatoes has a much healthier nutrient profile it's going to fill you up more for fewer calories a lot more vitamins and minerals and nutrients but we're not talking about the nutrients when we're talking about calories they're two separate things the calories are just a unit of measurement that's it just like a mile is always a mile whether the mile is on the sand or in the forest or on the pavement or on water the distance is always the same a mile is a mile is a mile how long it takes you to travel that mile let's say swimming the mile might take you longer than running the mile on pavement. Running downhill 
might be faster than running uphill, but it's still a mile because it's a unit of measurement. Same thing with the calorie. The nutrient composition changes, obviously. And that's what allows the food to be more or less nutritious per calorie. Hey, um, it's the, who, who posted the thing about like going off the grid and shortening the supply chain to your food? I think it was Rhino Cop. Okay, it might have been Rhino Cop on the Discord. So this is a really cool graphic where it says shorten your food chain. And it shows garden to plate. Boom. That's like the shortest. And then you have local farm, you know, through, I guess, farmer's market, mm -hmm. then to your plate. And then you have farm using transport to the market, then your plate, and so on. So farm, then transport, then packaging and distribution to the store, then your plate. And then ultimately, there's probably the one that most people use. Farm to transport, to distribution, to packaging, to delivery, and then to your plate. So with that being said, and since I just finished bitching and complaining about like the protein and where the fuck I'm going to put all this shit and all that, do you know of any, um, I guess, would it be ranchers or butchers or like somebody that could say, for example, hey, Chingo, you know you can get a whole bunch of steaks and, and all this type of different protein and meat from us direct and you don't have to go to motherfucking H-E-B and... I do, I do. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of farm markets around here, like on the f first Saturday or maybe every Saturday. There's one off of Buffalo Speedway. It's huge. You ever been to it? Mm. I think it's called Urban Harvest. Uh, it's a ginormous one. There's one off of I-10 and Memorial uh, at a church. And those those two particular ones have really good vendors for vegetables and meats and fishes. Oh, so they got uh, butchers and ranchers or Super, whatever. yeah, super, super fresh. So that's just an example if you wanted to do that. But that's not to say that there's really anything wrong with, like, if you go to HEB and get your prime or get your choice meat or whatever. Like, it's still, for the most part, going to have everything you need. And usually it's more easily accessible. Is it, are they taxing on all that? I like, is HEB, like, right now, due to... Fertilizers being up, uh, feed, grain, all this stuff. It's definitely that, gone up a bit, yeah. Okay. For sure. But I'm trying to save a buck here, Rob. I understand. I'm, I'm trying to say, if I find a butcher, are they going to hook it up? If you know the person, probably. Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. <laughs> It'd be cool to have like a motherfucking, uh, um, that type of sponsor on the show. Like They got like Butcher Box and all that kind of shit. We did Butcher Box when the pandemic first hit. It was It was good. They just uh, send you, uh, they just ship you the meat? Yeah, they ship us a box. You know, you pick whatever it is. Um, like bacon. And yeah, your bacon, your your ground beef, your tenderloins, your chicken breast and all that stuff. How much better it was than going to the store, I don't know. But a lot of the times you couldn't find it at the store at the time or there was a lot of shortages even then when that first happened. Um, I don't know. It was convenient. It was good. But if we're just talking about getting into shape, like not to say that that example, that graph isn't spot on because it is. But for a lot of people that want to lose weight, they're not also going to go all the extra mile on everything. Like, I'm going to go get, you know, uh, straight farm to table immediately. I'm going to yeah, go get yeah, everything, yeah. you know, in bulk and batched up so that I have it. Like, they're going to take a step at a time, literally a step at a time. Like, increase mm -hmm. your steps and do all the things we've been talking about. And you're going to get somewhere. Like, I talked about being uh, in my college shape by the time of my birthday in October. That's literally a pound a week for the next 10 months. You know, we're three months in. I'm on track. A lot of people that did the first challenge are on track. We're just going to have to wait. Like, it's just going to take a long time. But in the meantime, you can't stop working out. You can't stop fucking, you know, making sure you hit your protein and, and stay in your calorie deficit. And the thing is, too, is that now we get into the conversation of how do you reverse diet properly? Have you have you read anything about reverse dieting yet? No. I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. Bro. If you think like of after you're done dieting, how do you stop dieting? Are you ever done dieting, though, really? If you have like if you have a, a certain goal that you want to maintain, right? Like you're always going to if you eat in a surplus, you're going to gain weight. But if you're an athlete, that always needs to be like somewhere specifically. That's not your natural walking around weight. Yeah, if you're baby Glock, if you're baby Glock and you're five star, five star athlete, you got to be somewhere, right? Yeah. I, and in my age, I can't afford to just fall off. It, it's going to be bad. So Mighty Soul, for example, or Don, when they would compete for, for a competition, let's say they started at 2,000 calories, you know, uh, of their diet, and they slowly decreased, and then went to a more and more of a deficit, more of a deficit. You get stage ready, you get on stage. After you get off stage, how do you get yeah, back yeah, yeah. to working to your maintenance, your uh -huh. new maintenance? Uh -huh. So you got your maintenance, you know, where you would maintain that, your surplus where you would gain, and then your deficit. How long can we stay in these deficits? When I was in college, I could probably stay in a lot longer than I can now, or can I? I don't know. I haven't really pushed myself like I had seven, eight years ago. Once we finish this challenge, you know, over the next eight weeks, a lot of us are probably, if we went straight from the first one to the second one, 
a lot of us probably started around 2000, 2200, went to 17, 18, 16, 15, maybe by the time, um, what it would be, I guess May would hit or April, you're going to be now in the what, 1300, 1200 calories. How long can you sustain that? You can't. So you have to slowly reverse back Mm -hmm. while maintaining the amount of strength you've developed, the same amount of muscle that you've put on. So you have to inch towards that. And that's, that's an even slower process than losing that initial weight. So you have to think about that too, because if you just reverse back and I'm going to eat 2000 calories again, after going down to 12 or 13, you're going to put on a lot of body fat. Well, I'm not getting down to no 1300 calories, nothing like that. No time soon. I'm not doing the little two almonds and three leaves of spinach. Yeah. I'm not finna trying I'm not, to make them gains. I'm not trying to get to 4% body fat. No, no, no stupid shit like that. I'm just trying to goddamn get down. You know what I'm saying? Bring that big ass number down. So, so yeah, I might, I might only actually, um, uh, fuck. I must've just gained everything I lost during the first challenge. Cause I hopped on the, on the thing, the in body and said, I weighed 170 again. Uh, um, was that after your workout though? Uh, yeah. I mean, you're hydrated, you've eaten, you know, it's a lot of it's probably just water weight. And here's the thing. Here's the point I'm trying to make is the 170 that don't, I mean, that don't mean nothing to me. That don't even bother me. That's not even a big deal. It's the, the percentages and the breakdowns mm-hmm. within that 170 where it's like, whoa, 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 this needs to go up. This needs to go down. What the fuck is this? Well, a lot of it is just body composition, how you look at yourself in the mirror and then the body fat percentage itself. Cause you could be 170 and look like Yoel Romero, or you can be 170 and look like the guy that was presenting the news earlier, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we shall see. I don't know. Um, Mighty soul is like, well, maybe you need to push it harder in the gym. I was like, woman, Hey, right now, I love Mighty Soul. She's a terrible influence for you when it comes to this. Because her and I talk about this on her lounge all the time. She still, and I, I, not roast her, but I try to talk some sense into her. She tries to go like full competition mode immediately. And she's like, that's the only way I work. That's the only way I work. I was like, you're 40. You can't maintain competition mode and strictness and my diets and my menus from when I competed from 40 to 50. Learn new habits. Build new frameworks for your 40s to 50s. Otherwise, you're not, I told her, you're not going to achieve these goals. And I was like, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but like you can't throw the kitchen sink after you've had two kids and you're rebounding slowly as it is. And you might have another procedure for the fibroids and this, that, and the other. I said, we need to build new habits along with those processes now. And she weighs the food. Great, She's yeah. following, you know, uh, one of these menus and all that. So, yeah, patience, like like Homeboy said. Um, but, yeah, baby Glock. Dude, I went to jujitsu the other day. Yeah. Oh, I, to, I, I, I think you I You didn't mentioned. even talk about it. You said you stepped on something. Well, I mentioned it on RPT. But um, so I had missed two weeks in a row because mm-hmm. there was a bunch of stupid shit going on. And then I always wear my Crocs to jujitsu because you want to be able to take off your chanclas before you hop on that mat. And... Um, I was having a bad day that day. I was already pissed off. And I'm like, God damn it, I'm trying to get to jujitsu. And I'm tired of missing Gotta shit. Choke somebody. And I'm tired of missing this shit. And I, I already fell off. And now I, I done forgot some shit. And I'm a beginner. And I need to hurry up. So as I'm walking up there, there's a security guard out there, right? So he heard me cussing when I stepped on this little piece of... Um, it, it looked like the, like the base of a sign. You know how people put yard signs or political signs? It's like one of those little frames fence fencing right. material whatever that is and um and i like stepped on it you know and i thought it was laying flat but one of the parts must have been bent up pointing up like a nail yeah so boom went straight through the crock and i was like what the fuck these crocs are foam all over you're telling me it doesn't have a any type of support base under that like apparently these shoes are very dangerous like you do not want to step on any thumbtacks it went clean through the crock barely like it could have went between my, my big toe and the next toe, but it caught a piece of the uh, of the big toe. Yeah. So now, like a little, it's it a flesh wound. It's a flesh wound. So now, there's like blood on my sock. I'm, I'm like, motherfucker, son of a bitch. I'm cussing so loud. Security's like, whoa, this guy's fighting a ghost because he doesn't <laughs> know what happened. So I'm like, do I U-turn and go home and soak in my defeat? Like that, that emotional pain would have been worse than any other kind of pain. Just like I missed three weeks in a row. This was not meant to be having a rough day. So I say, fuck it. Let me just go into class and inspect the damage. See how much blood, like, can I get on the mat? So somebody was putting, they were putting tape on some shit. Yeah. I was like, Hey man, let me borrow a piece of that tape wrapped around my toe. And it even covered up my bad toe. So it worked. It was a win. It was a win, win. And, um, and I was rolling with a dude. I think he was like a brown belt or something. And and he's like, all right, man, I'm going to tell you what you need to work on. 
He's like, you need to work on guards. Because I was like, you know, on my back, like, okay, making points of contact. And if he comes this way to pass my guard, I'm going to make sure I turn. And, and so I'm like, I'm turning and I'm trying to get points of contact and I'm trying to break his posture. He's like, dude, you're not doing any guards. He's like, Do you, know, you don't know the, the De La Hiva and the reverse De La Hiva. And you don't know the X guard and the spider guard and the this guard and the that guard. I was like, bro, I'm trying to make points of contact like I learned on YouTube. And I'm trying to follow you around in case you're trying to pass my guard. He's like, work on guards. <laughs> get out of here. Work on guards. Good advice. Go home. Good advice. Yeah, it's very good. You like, should Shit. you should get one of those uh, training dummies. How much do those cost? Uh, Zebra, hit, hook it up. Let's, let's hit up somebody see if they can sponsor the show. Patreon.com forward slash red put the models. Actually, you know what? Speaking of sponsors and people getting their money's worth, when... Um, Bryce Mitchell went mm -hmm. on Tucker Carlson. Yeah. He did it right there from where his mats are in, mm -hmm. his, in his barn or whatever. And he had all them logos on that banner. And boom, all those lo logos are now on Tucker Carlson. Yeah. And it's like, damn, I'm, I'm looking around like, where the fuck? I'm going to put some logos. But it would be super dope, bro, in a perfect world to have, let's just say, even convert this space, pretend, right? Like, let's say we get a studio and we record somewhere else if we had mats on here and mats on the wall and your logos and of course i wouldn't be doing tutorials and nothing like that but maybe we'd have a guest mm -hmm. come in do a damn tutorial and have some logos and shit and then have my daughters back here practicing because yesterday i taught penny guard nice. like just a regular clothes guard yeah so i had her doing it to like a pillow and like one of her stuffed animals like a big like a little mickey mouse and boom on the leg guard Dude, I, did I show you the video of the kids showing us what they what they learned going from a Kimura suite oh, I need to, to see a that. mount? Oh, I'll show it to you. Because I have no idea how to do any of that. <laughs> They're really good. Weston's really taken to it. Really, really good. I'm going to give one more suggestion on people to follow. His name's James Smith. I know it sounds like a fake person's name, but he is a fantastic uh, follow from across the pond somewhere. He's he's also he's been a trainer for a long time, and the, his approach to fitness is... I've been jacked. I've taken the roids. I've trained people for all my life. And this is how you really do it. Fitness advice. Have you been told that you can't eat carbohydrates super funny. to lose fat? Have you been told that you're not allowed to eat breakfast to lose fat? Have you been told that you need to give up alcohol to lose fat? Have you been told that you have to eat chicken and broccoli every day to lose fat? Mm. If so, dial 0800 reporter cunt today. Have you been? Yeah, he's he's really just blatantly honest about all this kind of Cereal stuff. Is probably the and worst he calls out influencers. You can possibly start your morning. There's so much sugar in here. It's gonna spike your insulin. Fuck off. It's also pretty delicious. You fucking nose. You really do not want to be ever eating cereal. Cereal is great, and like many other great foods, like pizza, burgers, chips, hot dogs, nachos burritos, chocolate, ice cream. Obviously don't eat too much of it, or you get fat. And if you are fat, maybe stop eating so much of it. And don't lecture me on nutrition with a fucking haircut like that. So he's basically saying like, it's okay to eat some of this stuff sometimes? Yeah, of course. Okay. He, he's, he's, he's trying to break it down for people that have had these uh, psychological issues and food addictions and food uh, like people that were anorexic and all those kind of issues. He's written a couple books. He has a podcast. He has almost a million followers. He's very, very, like, he's done a lot of speeches and stuff. And he tries to do videos like this to just pique people's interest and attention. Like, okay, like, he made it sound like it's just that easy and that, like, simple or whatever. But then a lot of other videos are very educational as well. So, yeah, James Smith, at James Smith, uh, HPT, RPT. Well, for sure, I got to go buy groceries after this. I'm going to buy big cartons of egg whites. We're out of eggs again. Why? Because I don't have chickens or a chicken coop because I'm a fucking city boy. And I'm dependent on the fucking system that we have going. I don't have a farm. I don't have a garden. I'm not a butcher. I don't have cattle. I'm all hat, no cattle. I'll ask, my, I'll ask all my buddies. I mean, I have meat in the fridge just from a lot of my friends that are hunters and go and process their own, their own food, how much they have. And if you want to like buy like directly from it just got hunted and just got processed, you know, I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. You got to get a grill, though. You got to cook. You got to learn how to cook it, too. Don't mm -hmm. put it in the microwave, you know? No, 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 no. We don't microwave shit like that. 
um for sure man so very uh scientific informative <laughs> episode yeah we spent the entire hour talking about that which is great the challenge is kicking off and i think people are getting really geared up because spring is next week it's gonna get hot and people want to get back out there and do some shit so when are we gonna kick it off are we waiting on some people what's the deadline no we've kicked it off this is week one we've kicked it off yeah so is everybody who's gonna participate gonna go get a, a calipers so people that want to do the body fat so geo uh did a whole new spreadsheet so the link is in the puro gains channel from last week for everybody's initial weight and body fat so if you're the goal is 10 pounds if you don't want to do body fat maybe you're already kind of lean um and if you want to do body fat go get your dexa plug it into the spreadsheet and we'll keep track that way so there'll be a winner of who can lose 10 or more and who can lose the most body fat percentage after eight weeks beautiful so it started it's we're underway. And then at what point do we like check back in? Every time? Friday. Same thing as last time. So then every Friday I got to go bump. Well, no, no, no. Not the body, body fat. Not the body fat. But if you want to like also keep track of your weight just for the, the sake of the challenge, you can do that as well. Okay. Or you don't have to. But yeah. I, I feel like if you did it, it would help to just make sure you're staying on track. Because if you wait in uh, tomorrow or next Friday and you're like, damn, I'm up three. Like am I in your head? I'm like, am I putting on muscle? Is it water weight? Am, am I, I eating too many egg whites? Yeah. Well, did I eat too much broccoli? Yeah. Too many, almonds? too many almonds. Yeah. Too many fucking almonds. Uh, thank you guys, man. Uh, Hey, let us know what you think. Let us know in the discord, obviously in the comments. Um, do you think being healthy is important? Or am, am I making too big of a deal? Putting too much emphasis? How do y'all feel, man? What, what do y'all approach? What's y'all strategy? How are we tackling this thing? And of course, we have our resident PhD in the house, Rob. <laughs> Rob knows his shit. So thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll talk to you next time. Peace.